and welcome to New City Kids' first ever online hope raiser. We are your hosts for this exciting event. My name is Damaris. And I'm Jesse. We're excited to have you. Are you excited? Woo! Woo! And I'm Mo. And on behalf of our entire staff, we would like to welcome you and thank you all for joining us. Now, for those of you who have been a part of our spring productions in the past, you can obviously tell that this is a bit different than what we're used to. With the entire public health crisis that we got going on in our nation right now, we have to be very creative um, to come up with something unique and different to bring our entire New City Kids community together. And we're so glad that you all are part of that community. We hope that you walk away from this event inspired, encouraged, and full of hope, because we could all use a little hope right now. As we are getting ready to dive into some amazing stories of transformation, we invite you to participate with us. So on the side of your screen's little chat box, go ahead and let us know you're there. Leave your name and where you're watching from. I know we have tons of family from Jersey and from Michigan. Woo -woo. Shout out to y'all. But we also have some extended family in Mississippi and Chicago. So let us know you're here. But listen, we also have a few more people that would like to welcome you from around the New City Kids community. We'll first start the show off with them. And then after, we'll then show you a brief overview of the New City Kids mission. Hello from New City Kids Grand Rapids. Hello from New City Kids Jersey City. Welcome. 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 We love New City Kids. Thank you for your support. Enjoy the show. Hey everybody. Thank you for joining our first ever Hope Raiser. Thanks for joining us in our first ever Hope Raiser. We love New City Kids so much, and, and while we're bummed we can't be there to watch the amazing show in person, we're still excited that we get to watch it all. <laughs> hey, my name is Tank, and I'm a job coach here at New City Grand Rapids, and I just want to thank all of our supporters for coming and tuning in with us virtually today. Hope you enjoyed the show. Me and my family are gonna belly up to the TV. We're so excited to see these kids again and their, their awesome message, their, their talent, their, their stories and their devotion to the ministry. We're so glad you're in this with us. Enjoy the show. Hey, Spring Production viewers. My name is Julia. I'm watching the Spring Production from Chicago and I'm so excited to see what they have planned for us this evening. Um, I hope you're about to celebrate the mission of New City Kids tonight. Enjoy. My time on staff at New City Kids gave me insight into just how much work our kids and teens put into the spring production. So despite this being a change in format, I know that we are in for a treat and I'm excited to join you from Southern Mississippi. God's work through New City Kids can't be stopped by a virus. E event plans may change, but God is still our refuge and strength. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. You were an amazing crowd. Yes. And we hope that the Lord blesses you and raises your hope. Urban poverty is putting a generation of youth at risk. Violence, drugs, lack of higher education, and abuses of all kinds are rampant in poor urban areas. Across the U.S., Children from first to 12th grade face great obstacles every day. Living in poverty puts even the brightest children at risk. Children who are not in after-school programming are 50% more likely to experiment with drugs and alcohol. Ultimately, only 9% of low-income students will graduate college by 24. But there is hope. New City Kids breaks the cycle of poverty. Youth are challenged to see themselves as leaders and change makers, charting a new path both for themselves and for the children who look up to them. New City Kids creates a community like no other through a network of after-school programs in urban communities. These centers serve children from first to eighth grade, fostering an environment where young people are loved, seen not as the problem, but the solution. We hire local high school students to teach music and tutor younger children after school. We train our students, mentor them, tutor them, and pray for them every day. The results amaze everyone. Our teens find themselves surrounded by loving mentors in a safe and creative environment, and they flourish. Their grades improve, 
they gain self-confidence and joy. This new community filled with music and fun creates a window to a brighter future. New City Kids impacts high school students profoundly. Every senior we have employed in the past eight years has graduated high school and gone to college. And 90% of New City Kids alumni have earned a degree or are on track to graduate. New City Kids is changing lives, families, and communities. Join us today. Let's empower a generation of youth to break the cycle of poverty and make their cities new. It's so great to know there are so many folks tuning in to celebrate with us. It seems to be a theme during this time that we are all being brought a little closer together. For the first time in New City Kids history, you are watching a show where all three cities are represented. We have people tuned in from all over the country. So if you don't know me, my name is Jesse, and I serve at New City Kids in Patterson. And we want to say welcome. And once again, I'm Mo, serving at New City Kids in Grand Rapids. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dave Maris, serving at New City Kids in Jersey City. We're calling today's event a hope raiser because, can we be honest for a second? We could all use some hope and encouragement right now, more than ever before. So that overview video that you just saw talks about New City Kids' mission of loving kids for change. The way we normally express that mission is through our after-school center, where we serve over 500 youth, and our teen life internship program, where we empower high school students, disciple them, and set them on a trajectory for change. Over the past few weeks, though, a lot of things have been disrupted, both for us and for our world. Unfortunately, we've had to stop running our after-school centers, and we're not gathering in person with our youth or their families. And yet, our calling and our mission has not changed. Loving Kids for Change is our mission. It's in our bones. It's who we are. During this time of change, we have not changed. This is still our mission. And we have not stopped being New City Kids. We haven't stopped living out our ministry's founding passage, Isaiah 61. That's right, Jesse. Isaiah 61 is the charter passage of New City Kids. When our founders began the ministry 25 years ago, these words drove them to begin a new work. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. So we return to this powerful passage year after year, season after season. It grounds our ministry as God uses it to remind us all of our calling and our mission. As long as we see the ruined cities made new, and this message is still as relevant as it was 25 years ago. Throughout the show, we're going to reflect on this passage through the lens of some powerful stories of transformation, and we'll get to enjoy some music along the way. We'll end our time together today by sharing how New City Kids is pushing forward, even in this season, to continue to serve and support our communities, and how you can continue to partner with us in that work. So we hope that you are very, very blessed by this event. Speaking of which, Day and Jesse, I'm gonna grab me some popcorn and my most coziest blanket and enjoy the show with my own kiddos. You guys got it from here, right? Yeah, we got it. See you later, Mo. <laughs> Bye, Mo. Up next, we have a tribute to our founding, or maybe now better said, grounding scripture, Isaiah 61. It rang true at the birth of the ministry and continues to echo and resonate with our youth today. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me to preach. to buy The 
Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 4. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. An oil of joy instead of mourning. And a garment of praise instead, instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called the oaks of righteousness. A planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places devastated. They will renew the ruined cities. They will renew the ruined cities. They will renew ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord Isaiah 61 describes an unusual yet amazing transformation process. The very people who are hurting and experiencing hardship get to be the ones God uses to impact other hurting people. They are the oaks of righteousness. This is the philosophy behind our leadership culture at New City Kids. Young people leading other young people. You'll often see that go hand in hand with a change in title or position sometimes. For our teens, their promotions are often reflected with a change in the color of their uniform shirt, from black to blue. But every teen has their own journey to get there, and for some, as you might imagine, it is a bumpy road. They have to undergo a mindset shift that often takes time, it takes discipline, it takes falling down and getting back up again and again. One of the opportunities that we have on staff is to mentor and guide teens through that difficult process. In this next piece, you'll hear from a young person who has successfully navigated this process and has emerged as a leader on the other side of it. He's had a lot of ups and downs and with so many odds stacked against him, it seemed at one point like he was gonna give up. 
but God had a different story written for him. Lucky's story has inspired me and represented hope for so many of us in the New City Kids community. I'm honored to have worked with him. My name is Lucky Million. Um, I'm, some people call me Lucky, and I'm a senior at Lincoln High School. Before New City, I was closed off. I was always to myself. I didn't really speak to anyone. I'm from Haiti, and I moved to this country when I was about seven years old. Growing up in a Haitian household, it's difficult in a way because when you stay to yourself and you don't really speak to anybody in the house um, frequently, it's perceived as being disrespectful and it brought a lot of um, tension and a lot of disconnection between my dad and I. When I was in eighth grade, uh, I was really, I really wanted money. And then I heard about New City Kids and that they were hiring. So I went ahead and I applied and then I got the job. When I started New City, I was assigned as an ESL teacher. It was more about um, a paycheck. As time went on, I realized that there was this whole other side to New City, um, the environment, the people. One of those people was Sue. When I first met Sue, he was assigned to be my one-on-one -on -one person. At first, I didn't really, I wasn't really open to him. As time went on, he made me feel more comfortable to um, share how I was feeling, share um, like the stuff in my, that was going on in my house. Throughout my time in New City, um, Sue and I developed a strong relationship. It was time for leadership interviews and I decided to go for it. I was more involved with New City. I did spring production. I was a good role model for my students. I received an email and it, on the top it was like, New City Kids um, leadership position. I got denied. And then I was so angry. I screenshotted the email and in bold with caps, I emailed it to Sue. Um, when I finally got the chance to sit down with him, um, and I asked him why. He told me that um, it wasn't all about the answers that I gave. It wasn't about the spot on answers. It was about um, my attitude and the way that I carried myself. So that following year, I was less motivated. I was missing school. I wasn't really going to school as often. There was a lot of stuff going at home. My overall performance at New City was Slacking, I was slacking. My supervisor, Michelle, noticed it. And she pulled me to the side and told me about my overall work performance. She said that I had to let you go. Deep down, I honestly cared, but outside on the outside, I actually just like, okay, I, don't, I really don't care. But in my head, I was thinking those are my kids and I didn't really want to leave Olivia all by herself to teach the classroom. When I was let go at New City, it was a difficult situation that I had to deal with. And I felt like everything was going downhill and I was going downhill. Basically like everything that was going on in my household, it felt like I had no support from anyone. I had no support from my father, from nobody from my family side. And to me personally, the only support that I did have throughout my years of high school was New City. I decided to reapply. Normally people who do get let go of New City don't come back and reapply and I had the courage to do so and I felt a little embarrassed that I had to reapply. I had to do my resume again. I had to do my role play again and I had to interview again. <laughs> and guess who was assigned to interview me? Sue. I couldn't believe it. This interview had to be by far one of the hardest interviews that I had to go through. Sue made it seem like he wasn't going to be giving back my job. One of the questions that he asked me during the interview was, what are you going to do differently this time at New City? And I gave him my answer, which was, I am going to be a positive influence for the kids and I am going to take on more responsibility than I did before. This time around, I meant it, and he must have believed me because I was rehired as an ESL teacher. I had a big mindset change. From freshman year, it was more about me clocking in and getting my money and clocking out. But senior year, it was about me being in the classroom and engaging with the kids. 
What's crazy is that I'm the one leading the classroom now and showing my co-teachers how to do their job and how to have fun and lose themselves while teaching the kids. I'm happy that I could give back to my kids because they remind me of myself when I was an ESL student. It's hard learning English and that's why I love my job because I get to make sure that my kids don't get taken advantage of. My supervisor noticed my change in attitude and my leadership capabilities in the classroom. So she decided to promote me. And now I'm officially a blue shirt. Leadership became a natural habit. I already had it as a black shirt and I was embodying leadership without even thinking about it. So I'm looking forward to graduate high school and be the first person in my family to attend college. So far, I've been accepted to Warren, Lincoln, Morgan, William Patterson, and NJIT. Looking forward to studying biology, hopefully become a neurosurgeon in the future. New City Kids made me who I am today. I couldn't imagine myself going through high school without them. New City Kids have made me realize that I'm valuable no matter what other people say. At New City Kids, we value walking with our teens to experience moments of discovery. And one of those moments we get to see most often is the moment they discover leadership in themselves. Their leadership transcends beyond their New City Kids experience and carries over into their lives at school, home, and in their communities. Like Danae, who was once a shy and timid teen who has now blossomed into a confident leader. She is the president of the National Honor Society and her senior class, while also advocating for student concerns while being on student government. New City Kids seems to activate these qualities of leadership in our teens by placing them in a challenging but loving environment where they are free and safe to explore what leadership looks like for them. We are honored to see many of them mature into agents of God as they work in their communities, offer guidance to their friend groups, and support their families. Next is a video where you'll get to hear a few teens share their leadership journey, and I hope you are encouraged by their growth as much as I am. I definitely did not see myself becoming the leader that I am today. I was very shy and quiet, and here at New City, shy and quiet does not cut it. My experience for leadership, specifically here at New City, is very different from others. Others say that they have, you know, they took on leadership and they've just grown, but me personally, I struggled with leadership. I didn't see myself becoming a leader. I feel like it was, the role was like, pushed on me at a young age. I started working at New City Kids because I wanted to become a child psychologist and I felt that working with children would be the best outlet for me to succeed with my career. I was actually encouraged to come here by a former alumni, Diana, and she told me that New City was a place of growth and they really help you overcome challenges. And that weighed on my heart. I first came in as a TLI on the tutoring floor and I just came in tutoring the kids but then they started looking for new leaders. At first I liked being a leader because it was like I see myself at the top. I thought the others were inferior to me even though I wasn't a leader yet but I was doing leader things and at first I liked it but then once I actually got the leader position it was just like I had so much weighing on me that it was just like very stressful. I didn't have enough confidence in myself to say that I have the authority to be a leader. I had to challenge myself in ways that I never thought I would challenge myself. And I was challenged to become a stronger leader than I already was. And I was challenged to lead other people in doing things that I may not have been comfortable with. I began to change my perspective and see myself as a leader. I was told to plan an entire week of base class by myself. And I was like, what? I can't do that. <laughs> and with the right help and guidance, I was able to do it. And that's really when it started to click for me that I have the potential to be way better than I'm performing right now. I kind of let leadership go. I just was like, you know what? I'm just gonna come here, clock in, clock out. When I was called out on it, I took a leave because my attitude and my immaturity, it took over it. So I just felt as though I needed to leave and I just needed a break. But then I came back and I realized that 
I miss the job and I miss the people and I miss being a leader. But even though I didn't miss the stress that it comes with, but then I turned that stress into a work ethic and noticed that I had to do more than what was average, be exceptional. I've seen God in my leadership journey definitely when I doubted myself um, and I just would sit down and sometimes I would cry because I didn't know if I was being the best leader that I could be. Even though there's going to be trouble and things that you may not know, there's always going to be someone there for you. You never want to feel unwanted and I never felt unwanted at New City Kids. Before, I thought that leadership was just you rise to the top and then you have this power to tell people beneath you what to do. And it doesn't work like that here at New City. It's more of guidance. You help those beneath you so that they can rise up and become the person that you are. The most significant change in my idea of leadership is that it is easy, because honestly not, it takes a lot. It takes maturity, it takes responsibility, it just takes so much, and it takes a part of you, but you turn that, that part of you into success in a sense. That part of you that you didn't have before as being someone who was under somebody, you turn that into just a way to strive. I do believe that New City Kids has um, built me to be a leader anywhere that I go. Um, because when we go on professional visits or just going out to seeing someone speak to us, I was able to show in that moment that I wasn't just a teenager who didn't know what she was doing. I got to show people from everywhere when we went to college tour and things like that, that I knew that I was a leader and that I knew I could help other people. As you can see, our young people go through powerful leadership journeys at New City Kids. But what you might not know is that they often end up being the catalyst for their whole family to join them on that leadership journey as well. You're about to meet one such family. The Guzmans have been a part of New City Kids since 2010. That's actually when I first came on staff, and I can still very vividly remember little five-year-old McGelfie joining the New City Kids family for the first time. It has been my privilege and my joy to watch her grow up into this smart, passionate, God-fearing young woman right before my eyes. But it didn't stop there. After McGelfi joined us, then it was her mom, then her dad, then her younger sister. They have each engaged with a different program at New City Kids. The After School Center, the Teen Life Internship Program, and our newest program, Families for Literacy, which provides free support services to the immigrant parents of our After School Center students including ESL classes and workforce development, which we all know is a huge need in our communities right now. Now each member of the family is on their own path to leadership, striving towards these ambitious goals, wanting to make a big impact in their community. What can be more Isaiah 61 than a whole family on a mission to change not only their own circumstances, but that of their communities? I've been a part of New City in August, it'll be 10 years. My experience as a kid was actually very fun. Like, I love performing arts, so the fact that New City, um, the After School Center, had songs that we could do, or instruments that we could play, or things that we could dance to, that's always made the whole experience a lot better. I went to New City at five, but I started um, by Blue at seven, I was begging Miss Sarah. She kept saying no, because you have to join at 10, but of course, me, I don't quit and Bible quizzing as a whole just made the experience a lot better. Throughout my um, Bible quizzing experience, I've memorized more than 200 to 300 Bible verses. Through being a kid, I got to see teen staff who I wanted 
to um, to replicate. It just gave me a clear understanding of what I wanted to do, of what I wanted to resemble as I got older. So I definitely thought, I'm going to work here one day. I, I want to work here one day. Porque la niña estaba en el programa de After School New City Kids, el Jazz Echevarría me preguntó que si me gustaría ser parte del programa de alfabetización. Yo le dije, claro, siempre todo lo que es a favor de la familia es positivo para nosotros. Bueno, este, nosotros vinimos de la República Dominicana eh, hace 15 años y aquí enfrentamos muchas dificultades. Él nos aconseja como pareja, a mi esposo y a mí, no, ellos nos aconsejan eh, cómo mantener la familia, cómo mantener la economía. O sea que la economía aquí en los Estados Unidos ahora mismo es crítica. Pero hasta ahora eh, rehusimos a pagar bien la renta, rehusimos a salir de todos los problemas por la ayuda y la orientación que nos da aquí el programa. Que yo entiendo que son de primera mano que nos llega a nosotros para el futuro económico, y no nada más económico, para el futuro general de un hogar. Me ha ayudado con el resumen. Me han ayudado a, a, a hacer appointments, citas, con lo, o, para los empleos que he tratado de conseguir. La clase de Andrew son bien difíciles, porque Andrew no coge eso y que, que usted faltó un, un homework. Hay tres calificaciones, 100, 50, 50 o nada o cero. cero. Me ha ayudado bastante en lo que es la gramática en el inglés. Eso me ha valido ascenso en mi trabajo. En el inglés a mí me ha ayudado bastante porque como yo trabajo en un nursing home y no sé, los doctores me llaman a mí para traducirle. Oh, me siento bien cuando le debo traducir de inglés y español. Y digo yo, bueno, pues Andrew está haciendo su trabajo. I love the fact that my parents are learning English because it helps them by advancing them in their careers and being able to get a broader education. The only thing is that we both get homework at the same time. Y el inglés no ha terminado. Eh, tengo que llegar hasta el final porque quiero ser un RA y para eso tengo que seguir en mi clase de inglés. Y en un futuro me gustaría tener un nursing home para mí, para mi familia. Uh, yo estoy trabajando en la, municipal, en la municipalidad en estos momentos. Eh, trabajo en el departamento de aguas residuales, eh, pero mi meta principal es incursionar en el, en el ruedo político y para eso quiero eh, estar preparado. Al yo ver lo adelanto que Miguel Fi hizo y lo preparada que, mi, que estaban preparando bien a Miguel Fi, se saqué la, a mi segunda niña, la niña entró al programa, contentísima ella, contentísima yo. I've been at New City Kids for two years. When I first went to New City Kids, I thought I wasn't going to get friends because I was a little sassy. But now I have a lot of friends at New City. When I first went on stage, I was pretty scared. I was just a little nervous to go on stage, but now I've I've improved a lot. Eh, yo le pregunté a ella hace unos cuantos días que qué New City le ha ayudado. Me dice ella que New City le ha ayudado tanto que ella se siente que New City es su casa. What I like about New City is the adult staff, the teen staff, and the classes. One day, I hope to work at New City Kids just like my sister. I feel very proud of her because when she was younger, or when she was at New City, she was always she always talked about it with me. Like she always wanted to be at New City and learn and help the kids. And now she's a piano teacher, and I'm a piano student. To actually become a teen staff was actually really fun. It is actually really fun because it's like, it's a different experience. I get to interact with the kids that I am teaching, being able to see 
how insanely different every kid is. They have their different ways of developing the skill. It's just really amazing to see how they develop. I definitely find resources that help me for my future. Like for Karen, one of the adult staff, she is always on you for college stuff. Even if you're a freshman, she's always on you, but it's very good because now I, um, if I want to apply to something for pre-college or a summer program or just something before college, I have Karen. The way I thought about things as a student as in the city were very different than how I think about things now. I could see a whole bunch of um, opportunities that I use now to grow. Like for example, the music department, like with my sister, she's in keyboard class. So just because I have that extra skill from the city, now I can help teach her so she can be ready for her class and um, the leadership skills. Um, the respect for others, just a whole bunch of elements that really shaped me today. Y este programa le da la oportunidad que primero usted es estudiante, después maestro. Y eso es muy, muy bueno. Y eso le ayuda a ella a tener conocimiento y un enfoque y, un enfoque y amor al trabajo. Being in New City really shaped who I am today because through New City I was able to develop the skills I will be using for the future and I was also able to find my passions. And now I see myself in more of a different light. I see myself more of a leader in my community. Instead of only being of the community, now I'm helping run the community. And now I can actually support those around me and help them be who they want to be. One of the blessings of New City Kids Ministry is being able to walk with youth and their families long term and see how God is at work in them and through them. McGelfie's own experience at New City Kids opened the doors to minister to her parents and her sister, ultimately setting that family on a trajectory for transformation. And it doesn't end with them. You could hear it in McGelfie's voice. She now sees herself as a leader in her community and neighborhood at the age of 14. That's the vision of Idea 61. Ode to Righteousness coming together like Ayana, Lucky, and McGelfie, growing up in the midst of the city and becoming its rebuilders and restorers. Over the past few weeks, we've heard from so many of you checking in on how our youth and our families are doing. Thank you for that. You have been lifting up the New City Kids community in prayer and offering your help and support. And even though we can't gather together in person with our youth, New City Kids' mission stays the same. We are committed to loving our young people for change and providing safe and stable relationships where they can grow in their leadership and their faith. So you might be wondering just how we're expecting to do that. Good question. Over the past couple of weeks, our staff have spent countless hours over the phone and online encouraging our families, many of whom are feeling lonely, hopeless, or just stuck right now. We have provided laptops to the students who need them for online school. We provided instruments and music lessons so they can keep growing musically. We have made food and delivered groceries to families in need. We're providing online training to keep engaging with their leadership. We are hosting online Bible studies and devotional times. We're leading discussion groups. We're even providing college advising because yes, our teens still have to navigate the college process while in quarantine. Most of all, they've just needed a safe space to talk through what's going on in their world, and we've been that for them. And it doesn't end there. As we spend time with our youth over the phone and online, we keep learning how the work that they've been doing day in and day out as tutors and music teachers is impacting how they're responding at home. One teen who is now taking care of six kids during the lockdown recently told us that he didn't realize that everything that they were doing at New City Kids in their classes each day would actually make a difference at home and is trying to keep their siblings and nieces and nephews in line while mom is at work. We're proud to say that in a time when many people are losing their jobs, our youth are not. We're still paying our teens and they're earning it by participating in virtual professional development, doing online life skills classes, leading worship sessions, taking music lessons, the list goes on and on. Our youth are actively reaching out to us with ideas to bless their students. They're putting their heads together to come up with creative things the kids can do while their parents are working. They're creating projects their kids can also complete to earn prizes when they get back to the after-school center. 
In a time when it's so easy to withdraw into themselves, these oaks of righteousness are actively thinking about how to lead, creating moments of joy and ways to share hope with others. Clearly, New City Kids is far more than our programs. It's about our mission, and that is alive and well. And we couldn't do it without you. Thank you for being a part of our amazing community of supporters. We know this is an extremely challenging time in our world, and many of you have been personally impacted by it. So thank you for the ways you have continued to pray for and invest in the mission of New City Kids. We continue to need your support. And traditionally, our spring productions are a moment where we ask you to partner with us again. Many of the families we serve are deeply affected at this time. So today, more than ever, our youth need the type of hope and joy they're experiencing through the New City Kids community. You can click the link on this screen or text the number below to give. Your generous gift will provide transformation for our youth and in our communities. We have a special opportunity through one of our foundation partners to match all gifts up to $1,000 given through that website and that phone number. This offer is good until midnight on March 31st. So this is a perfect opportunity to double your impact. Your gift will ensure that New City Kids can continue to love Kids for Change and pour into our families and communities. And as you consider how you can partner with us, we want to share a special song with you. Usually this is the part of our show where the teens will come out full of energy and sing a final song. But unfortunately, they aren't able to do that this year. So we want to take this opportunity to dedicate this message of hope and resilience to our youth and to the New City Kids family at large. He's awakening the hope in me by calling forth my destiny. He's breathing life into my soul. I will thirst for him and him alone. He has come like the rain, the shower sign, the barren.
and giving his heart to the broken and sharing his home with the orphans. He is a joy, he is my joy, he is a hope for the nations. The Father's heart we're embracing, and he is a song we're declaring. He is the joy, he is my joy, he brings hope to the hopeless and giving his heart to the broken and sharing his home with the orphans. He is the joy, he is my joy, he is the hope of the nations. The Father's heart we're embracing. Friends, we are so grateful that you joined us for this online Hope Raiser. We pray this show has brought you some hope. Even though our event is coming to a close, please continue to connect with us through the comments below, the live chat, or as always, through our social media and email. We'd love to answer any questions you might have and find out how we can pray for you. We also want to hear how this event may have encouraged you or given you hope. So from all of us here at the New City Kids family, thank you so much for joining us. That's it for now. Grace and peace.